Hey guys, welcome back to World Mechanics. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you guys have a Jeep uh, Cherokee, Jeep Renegade, Jeep Compass with a 2.4 multi air engine, guys, and you need to replace your hydraulic valve lifters, okay, this is a hydraulic valve lifter, guys. Stay with us, we will show you how to do that, what needs to be done. We will cover the whole video from start to finish. Yes, it will be a long video, but it will be very, very detailed video as well. Now, as you can see, guys, that engine is out of the car. Practically, you do not have to remove the engine. Why we do that? Because we will have at least 100 videos on that engine guys and we want to show you how to fix things on your own but with the engine in the vehicle it's practically impossible to show you where bolts are what needs to be done with the engine out we can get really good angles and show you every single bolt its location and how to remove them so make sure guys you subscribe to the channel and like the video our mission is to save you guys as much money as we can if you need to buy new uh, new uh, val hydraulic valve lifters guys we'll have the link in the description of the video below guys where you can purchase from that's where we get our parts from so let's go ahead and start on it now so if the engine is in the vehicle guys uh, when you open the hood okay you're going to face it that way so everything that we'll be doing on the left side so stay with us and we'll show you what to do now so guys let me explain quick okay if the engine is in the vehicle you'll face it that way when you open the hood right here you have the air filter box so stay with us we'll explain what you need to do first you need to remove your uh, engine cover just pull it straight up okay it has four rubber bushings that it attaches to one two three four and those guys they attach to the uh, to the valve cover let us uh, let us explain you where now guys okay you can see one two three four and we'll show you guys what you need to do now so right here you have the air filter box guys this is the uh, hose for the intake okay and you need to get that hose clamp loose and once you get it loose uh, you can go ahead and pull the uh, the hose out okay you just unscrew it with a flathead screwdriver like this one here okay we'll need to do one more on this side on the throttle body okay check it out just get it loose there as well now this is the intake temperature sensor remove that one as well let me go on the other side so i can show you a little bit better where things are a little bit limited room here guys you're going to have one clip that clip will look like the clip right here but it's broken you go with the clip removal tool underneath and you pull that clip out then you have a 10 millimeter bolt holding right there go ahead remove it guys okay like that and you can grab that piece and pull it up so you can see that's some of the first steps about removing the uh, valve cover okay to remove that valve cover out of the engine now guys next you can see where your engine uh, engine cover attaches on top okay this thing will need to come out okay like that just unscrew it right here do not lose that thing guys very important not to lose it so next right here you can see we need to disconnect okay that clamp uh, okay push down on it perfect like that remove that nut 10 millimeter now this is your camshaft position sensor disconnect it okay press okay that thing ours is broken that brown thing you need to pre uh, push it up then you're going to press here and pull it out okay like that and that uh, uh, that uh, coolant pipe actually attaches to the coolant reservoir right here it says bottle check it out so one clamp remove it okay and you can go ahead and pull it out or you just pull it out of the engine and you flip it on the side guys what else we need to do quite a bit of work here now guys we need to disconnect our wiring harness and now the interesting part is here because we'll need to start taking things apart and first we need to remove the ignition coils okay let me focus quick here that red thing press it back push down now right here and disconnect the coils one by one perfect this one is out too just press disconnect them okay and we can go ahead and remove the ignition coils now with a 10 millimeter socket that we'll need to do guys and you can see each of the ignition coils it has one bolt that we need to remove perfect 
Perfect. Next. Grab them, pull them out, guys. Okay. We dropped our, one of our boats. So pick it up if you do that. Leave your spark plugs in because if you drop anything, you can pull it out later. Otherwise, it's going to end up in the engine. You can see how deep that hole is. Unbelievable. Next, guys. We have a few more things to do here. We will disconnect the wiring harness. No. Okay, you're going to have clips, guys. Plastic clips like this one here. And you remove them with a uh, with a clip removal tool. Go underneath. Okay, underneath right here. When you get it loose, right there, that way you will not break it, guys. Okay, because somebody already broke it. The one here, and you're going to have one right there. You see, this is broken. This one is good. So if you can go underneath, go ahead and pull them that way. Perfect. Here, guys, we have one sensor that we need to disconnect. Okay, like that. Okay, you can check it out. PCV holes on the back side there disconnect it as well okay great now let's see what else we need to do here in order guys to be able to pull that uh, valve cover out everything else should be good there eight millimeter socket and we start removing both guys get them loose you will not be able to pull them out some may come out but you actually have to keep them on the cylinder head and we'll explain later how to replace them as well if you need to buy a new gasket, we'll have guys the link in the description of the video below, so check it out, okay, where we get ours from. Okay, I'm trying to show you where all the bolts are, to follow the action. Perfect, right here in the middle we have four more that are hidden that impact is amazing guys we have it listed in the description of the video below in case you want to get one saves you so much time perfect now that gasket might be stuck guys so you might need to pry here a little bit with a screwdriver okay just careful if it's not coming out probably something still holding okay a little bit in the back it's holding so let's put a little bit there one more bolt i told you guys if it may be stuck okay it may be stuck but if it's not coming okay loose after you pry a little bit don't force it guys okay let's see if anything else is holding maybe we have a bolt that is not loose all the way yep one in the corner right there once we remove it i'll show you where all the bolts are as well okay we get it out let me show you where all the bolts are this is the front of the engine one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen guys okay now remember 15 16 17 18 19 20 bolts and this is guys the valve cover Every time you remove it, it's recommended to replace the gaskets and don't forget to replace the one in the middle here for the spark plugs as well. Next, we'll bring the engine to TDC, top dead center point. Okay, this is TDC mark here and you have one mark on the inside of the crankshaft pulley. It's okay, right there, it's coming. You can see, it. oh, right there, that's TDC point guys and we're ready to go now. So with 10 millimeter guys, we're going to get uh, the three bolts okay three bolts for the uh, for the water pump loose that way we can remove the pulley later because uh, we need to remove that one so we can uh, remove the timing cover so we will need to remove the serpentine belt for the next step this is your tensioner pulley 16 millimeter socket or 5 8 works as well go ahead counterclockwise okay and pull the belt out the only way you can pull it out from is the idle pulley and you can completely remove the belt i'll definitely recommend to buy a new belt now if you want to see guys where we get our parts from check out the link in the description of the video below fast shipping good price so i'll definitely recommend it 
Next guys, it's really hard to remove that bolt. Okay, and I'll show you what we use, something that's not very expensive. People will buy super expensive air compressors and things like that. We use that six gallon pancake compressor by DeWalt. You can see how little it is, but that thing is super powerful. It goes to 165 PSI. This is unbelievable guys, 165. And right now it's, it's stopped at 170. So even when a little bit more, uh, it's a six gallon tank, but it's enough guys to do the impact for uh, probably 30 to 40 seconds. So that's definitely enough time to, uh, to remove the board. We'll show you how powerful it is. In addition, we use an Ingersoll rent. Okay, Ingersoll rent impact. Those are amazing. They come in different colors as well. This is super powerful guys, impact. So 22 millimeter socket and we'll show you how it takes just a couple of seconds. Okay, to remove that bolt now. Okay, perfect. Now you can see it just took us a couple of seconds, okay, to do that in no time. As you can see guys, our TDC moved a little bit, so what we're going to do, okay, we're going to bring it back to TDC mark again, okay, perfect, just like that. Now we can go ahead and grab the pulley, it's a key pulley, and remove it. You don't need to worry about anything else, okay, and you can see it came out of the way now. So next we're going to remove the pulley for the water pump. Perfect. With that out of the way, okay, we're getting closer and closer. We need to remove this pulley and that pulley there as well. Uh, there is a little bit of difference. One is reverse threaded. The bottom one is going counterclockwise to get it loose. This is the idle pulley, the tensioner pulley. You need to go clockwise to get it loose. This is because due to the fact that it's reverse threaded. So by going counterclockwise to install the belt or remove the belt, you will not get the board loose. So this one, okay, uh, this one is 16 millimeter, okay, right there. Perfect. You can see reverse threaded, guys, got it out. On the bottom of the engine, we have, uh, this is the oil pan. We have four bolts that we need to remove, one, we got them loose guys so we don't have to waste your time, three, and the last one is a 12 millimeter. Okay, this one there, those are out. Now we have a few more bolts that we need to remove here, we'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, we we'll need to remove guys the bracket for the... AC compressor on the bottom. You don't have to remove the AC compressor. Okay, just one bolt here and a few bolts underneath. Okay, we'll show you where they're located. Uh, this one is too long. Okay, and we have one more, I think. Perfect, almost coming out now. Okay, great. This one came out. Now, let's see if we have a hidden bolt here. Well, right, right there, we just have one more that we need to remove. So, we'll just go ahead and remove it now. Perfect. We can go ahead and start removing the timing cover now. 10 millimeter socket first, guys. millimeter now
Yeah. Okay, this is a bigger one. Looks like those are, this is 13. And the other ones are either 14 or 15 millimeters. 15. For what it looks like, maybe. Okay, yep, 15 millimeter. Perfect. Now guys, you have to be extremely careful how you remove that thing because you can crack it. There is two guides, okay, one here, one over there. So gently pry guys, if you pry a little bit too much, that thing can crack in no time. We broke a, a couple in the past from not being careful, so we were in our mistake guys, from our mistake and now we go very slow. Okay, this one came out easy, this is all the silicone now. Uh, when you're ready to reseal, we guys will show you what we use, what we clean it with and all that stuff will be listed in the description of the video below. We'll have the links for your convenience. We use a scraper like that, okay, and usually, okay, we're going to clean all the silicone. You clean it really good, clean it with brake cleaner after that, clean your uh, engine block, make sure things don't go in the open. And this is guys actually the gray silicone we like. We like it even better than the red one and it's ultra gray, maximum torque. We've used that one so for so long and we haven't had any problems with it. It seals really good. So after you remove guys the valve cover, timing cover, we can continue uh, with the next step. We'll show you what we need to do. Remember, I said the engine needs to be a TDC, top dead center. Make sure you verify that. And we can continue now with disconnecting a few wires for the timing control. No, so, uh, also known as the brick guys right here it's that thing that controls the intake valves we will need to remove that one so how you disconnected that yellow piece okay uh, you push it back and then you press down there and you pull it out it gets stuck guys sometimes that thing will get stuck big time okay so make sure you get it out a couple right there, we have right here as well. Trying to see which one's better. I think it's better with the light so you can see how things are doing here. Okay, don't pull for the wires, guys. Grab for the, the okay, for the plug and pull out because otherwise, okay, you can damage things, guys. This one's out. We lost our yellow thing here so we need to pick it up later so careful not to pry them too much you have four control solenoids that you need to do that too and after that guys okay this is your uh, variable timing control right here guys this bolt right here and the bolt over there those will be the last bolts to remove because they have the guides and hold things in place so Six millimeter Allen wrench, all the tools and parts again guys that we use. You can find the links in the description of the video below for your convenience. Okay, that bolt there now. Okay, this one. Get it loose, now the one right here. You have two metal guides, careful not to drop those. Those things can fall in the engine now, guys. And if they do, you have to remove the open and more stuff to find them, otherwise it could be catastrophic. So careful, guys. Okay, here we have a metal guide. Okay, right there. Those, sometimes they get loose and they will fall off. Check it out, so be careful. And one over there. This is the gasket, every time it's recommended to uh, get a new gasket. We have guys the link again in the description of the video below. Next we will need to disconnect the vacuum pump, brake pump here, so those two red things. Spread them up a little bit, pull it, and then you just grab and pull it out. We have three bolts that we need to remove. You will have two seals on the inside, so make sure that they will come out. Two big, a big O-ring and a small O-ring. Uh, 
Okay, we grab it guys, this is the brake uh, vacuum pump right here, this is the big o-ring, this is the little one, sometimes the little one will stack, get stuck there, so uh, be careful. Now, we can continue with the next step, uh, removing, okay, we need to remove the timing chain, so we can go ahead and release that. So this is the tensioner now guys, top dead center, this is the timing chain tensioner, 10 millimeters, okay. Perfect. And we can pull that thing out. Great. Now, in order to remove the chain now, guys, okay, what we need to do, okay, we need to remove that timing chain guide right here. And the, uh, we need to remove also the timing chain tensioner arm. This is 13 millimeter socket. There's a bushing that comes with, okay, on the bottom. Make sure that you don't lose it. After that, we'll remove the timing chain guide. 10 millimeter socket, three bolts that we need to remove. Okay, you can see. Perfect. Now, unfortunately, guys, you will not be able to just grab the chain and pull it out. It's a short chain. This is actually a good design because you cannot uh, jump the timing so easy but you have to remove the bolt for the camshaft now so you can remove the pulley with the chain. Perfect. Now you grab it, gently twist it a little bit back and forth and it comes out. Okay, and we are ready to continue with the next step now. So. As you can see guys, okay, now we need to remove these bolts in order to remove the camshaft. And what we need to do now guys, okay, right here now, uh, we have, uh, you can see they're numbered. E1, okay, E2, E3, E4, first and last one, you cannot confuse them, all the arrows point towards the timing chain. So we start removing those with 10 millimeter socket now. So you can see they start coming out guys. It's important to organize those and not to uh, damage them, not to get them covered in dust, sand. Keep them clean, wipe them before we install them guys. We have the installation video as well on the channel, putting the engine together so you can see there what needs to be done to you guys. 12 millimeter socket, last two bolts here. Now we grab them guys and we organize them in the same order. We're going to transfer them to that towel there and that way we'll keep them in order and we'll keep them clean as well. Okay, perfect. You can see just like that and we can pull the camshaft guys now out of there as well. Okay, just like that. So once you guys, okay, once you remove uh, your camshaft, you remove the variable timing control. You can see your valves for the exhaust side. Okay, they have hydraulic lifters. Make sure you stand till the end. We'll show you the one on the intake, what needs to be done. Okay, those are the ones for the, uh, you can see for the exhaust one. You're going to remove this one, okay? And you're going to go ahead, guys, and grab the lifter itself. Okay, grab it and pull it out. This is your hydraulic lifter, guys. And you practically, okay, remove all of them just that way. The way we remove that one. Not very complicated, uh, but it takes some work, guys. And again, we'll have the link in the description of the video below. Now the one for the intake side, guys. Okay, let me show you here, guys. This is for the intake. Practically, those are hydraulic uh, lifters as well. They're just by the oil pressure and all that stuff. Those are not replaceable, guys. You have to remove and replace the whole block. We have the one in the link, uh, the link in the description of the video below if you need to purchase one. But that's how you guys do it. Unfortunately, it's not serviceable. So thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos. If you need help with anything, uh, let us know. In addition, guys, uh, putting it together, you need to know the torque specs. All that will be on the channel. We're planning on making the video once we start putting it together. So thank you for watching and see you guys next time.